All right, our first scripture up on the board. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon us. That intellectually, Father, that we just won't see it intellectually, but we'll see it by the light of God, the revelation, light of God that quickens us, and we see it, and it changes us. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon every person here that has an open heart. And for those that do not, Lord, open their heart that they might receive the revelation word of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our first scripture is up on the board. It will be uh, Romans 5.17. 5.17, Romans 5.17. A lot of times when we preach, it just goes over people's heads and they can't even remember what verse it was. They can't remember anything that the preacher said. He, but it was a good message, wasn't it? <laughs> I like to preach that way, but that ain't getting it for the saints. You've got to understand the scriptures. You've got to be able to apply them and know how to apply them, how to walk in God led by the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at this scripture and examine. Are we ready? For if because of one man's trespass, now let's identify the one man, Satan, <laughs> Adam. He was an angel that was the first one, wasn't he? He really did. But Adam sent. So for if because of one man's trespass, that is, that's Adam, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one. In other words, death fell on every individual. It was passed down from Adam all the way down the line through our DNA, and we caught it. There's a lot of these flus that people have today that pass on to somebody, and you catch it. Wasn't your fault, but you catch it anyway. Reign through, through that one man. Much more, I like that, much more. Everybody say, much more? Surely will those, and who are those? That's us. Let's identify us. We're those who received, notice, receive, receive, not heard, not listened to, but receive. God's overflowing grace. Ah. Overflowing grace. Overflowing grace. Not everyone that talks about it. Not everyone that reads about it. But everyone that re what? receives the overflowing abundantly grace. That is so much more bigger than what Adam did over here. How many sees it? There's other scriptures that verify that out. All right, here we go. Un which is, by the way, unmerited favor. We didn't merit it. It's, it was, it's a favor. Notice this. And the free gift. Everybody say free gift. Free of gift. condemnation. What? Righteousness. If the Lord wants to give you righteousness, people today, I was talking the other day, I went to, Susan May went to visit this uh, uh, place that they sell books, that, the, the Agape, Agape store that has and everything. And I went in there, of course, this is, boy, this is, this is just like hallelujah to me, you know. And I looked at the woman, she's happy and smiling, she's a Christian. I said, isn't it wonderful to know that you're righteous? And she stuttered a few times, and I know where she's coming from. No, no, I'm just an old sinner. I said, wait a minute, no, no but, but, are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. Didn't you receive the the, the overflowing grace, the, the unmerited favor of, of righteousness, the free gift. I said, well, get your Bible. She got her Bible, and I showed her where it was in the Bible. Whew. 
free gift. Who could I give it to? Who would need it at 20? Not, not, nobody in here. Would you need a 20? Huh? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> she said definitely. Did you work for it? What did you do to earn it? What'd she say? Received. You received. That wasn't hard. Just receive the overflowing grace that God has for his children, for everybody. Overflowing grace. It's like a waterfall. I like that. Oh, so we got one gift there. And what is that gift? Now, there are people that will not receive, believe it or not, that $20 bill. Probably if I offered some of you guys, you wouldn't receive it. Who said try me? <laughs> I ain't going to try you. <laughs> Free gift. Free gift. It's free. You can do nothing to earn it. It's a free gift. You can't buy it. It's a free gift. See, see, once you understand the love of God, love loves to give. Love has to express itself in giving unconditionally. Now, we've all experienced giving grudgingly, haven't we? Let's see, let's see the hands in here besides me. Come on. 100%. Yeah, man. I got a granddaughter. She'll take all I give her. <laughs> I think sometimes her name is Jimmy because she will take everything I will give her. But I love her. And believe it or not, I can give now, and it don't hurt. Are you there yet? You're not, you're not, not, be honest, you're not there. I can. I can. I can give now, and it don't hurt. But I remember it was like, man, it was tear my insides out to give. Absolutely. Are you got any questions, just hold them to after the service, because we're putting this on a DVD, Okay. It's like the telephone rings. Who is it? It's, you know, one of my grandchildren. How much you want? <laughs> now, that didn't happen overnight. Have you ever heard the expression, give to it hurt? How many of you ever heard that expression, give to it hurts? Yeah, I think that's what happened. But all I know, you see, if God don't do the work in us, you will, you will suffer every time you have to give something uh, to somebody. But when you are set free, when God's done that work in you, that what we call sanctification, and you find that in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the God of peace will sanctify you, spirit, soul, and body. And in that sanctifying work, you're free. That's when you, when, you, when you walk with God and you learn how God works. Most of us should be at a point, and I know some of us haven't walked, some of you haven't walked with the Lord that long, but I've walked with the Lord for over th for 50 years, somewhere right in there. You think I've ever had any dealings of God in my life? You can be sure I have had them. Because, see, when you're a pastor, it's a double deal. You just get a little slap. When he slaps me, it's like, ooh. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Do I have your attention, Bob? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Chastisement for the moment is not pleasant. 
But afterwards, it yieldeth the peaceful fruit of righteousness. See, our righteousness bears fruits of righteousness. That's why God gives us his righteousness, and it's a gift, and, it, and he plants it in his garden. How many know we're his garden? And it takes root. Hello? It takes root in our spirit and in our soul. And begins to grow and bears fruit. But it ain't our fruit, it's his fruit. He planted the seed of righteousness. It was a gift. He planted it in his garden. And his S-O-N, son, shines on it. And the rain of the word, the Holy Spirit waters it. And it just, the, 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 the fruits of the Spirit, notice, fruits of the Spirit, they just come forth out of you because that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit that's in us. You don't have to strain. Hello, are you out there? If you're still straining to love somebody, you're in the flesh. I'm not saying that I say, but I'm saying this is the way it is until you can let God do that work in you where the Holy Spirit will bear His fruit. Because I got news for you. Our fruit is dead works. His fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. A free gift of righteousness. I'll guarantee you go out this week and you find some Christians. And I remember I shared this with a friend of mine not too long ago. And I said, isn't it wonderful to know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ? I'm not righteous. Let me say something. Righteousness is who you are. Holiness is what you do. God has made us righteous with his righteousness. It's a gift. Now let's read that a little bit further. Talk about the free gift of righteousness. What? Putting them into right standing with himself. Now I'll ask you a question tonight. Are you in right standing with God? Raise your hand if you are. Just check it out. That's good. And that's what God did. He gave you the righteousness and made you right with himself by what he did on Calvary's tree. It's all a gift. Look at now as we follow that on down. Putting them in right standing with himself. I love it. Reigning as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, what you have there is the gift of grace. The overflowing grace is a gift. And the gift of righteousness is a gift. Nobody can earn their salvation by what they do, by their human effort. So there's two things there. And one is the gift of righteousness and the gift of grace. For by grace are you saved... Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, if you comprehend that, if you will receive that 24-7, there'll be a transformation in your life that you will begin to reign and rule through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, sometimes it'll get flustering with you because... I think the biggest thing that, that, that gave me the biggest problem is reigning over my thinking facilities. Anybody ever have any problem in their thinking facilities? Raise your hand. Let me see. Every Christian does. But we learn how to reign. How? By casting down every imagination. A lot of your thoughts aren't your thoughts. So quit thinking them. They're the devil's thoughts that put into you to try to make you a slave to him, and he wants to use you to cause trouble. Let's tell it like it is, Bob, in your family, in the church, where you work. 
Y'all want me to say that again, don't you? No, you got it the first time. I would just love for everybody to be honest one day and just stand and say, let me tell you what the thoughts with my mind today was. You know, some of those thoughts... Uh, <laughs> Some of those thoughts are juicy, you know. The flesh likes them. Can, can I be honest? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Sure, that, that flesh that's not crucified yet, it, 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 you know, that's a pretty good thought. See, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to lose a little weight. I guess you all can tell I done lost 20 pounds, didn't you? Who said I, what? Who gained 20? I didn't gain, I lost 20 put down on me like that <laughs> tell Susan all you and sometimes you'll get so flustrated you know and I've been there so Lord I knew I love you but I've been thinking that bad thought but I cast it down I cast it down someone said well a mosquito got on your head what would you do he got on. Another one gets on. What do you do? Another one gets on your head. What do you do? And you go around all day. <laughs> I cast that thought down. I cast that thought down. I killed that mosquito and cast that thought down. Cast that thought down. Here, let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sick. I say, Susan, if I say anything that's not godly, it's not pleasing to God, slap me. <laughs> well, about three times she slapped me, and I said, let's cancel that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you got a whopper there, baby. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, that might be a good idea, isn't it? You know, commit yourself to somebody, and if you open your mouth when you shouldn't, That's, that's better than the frying pan. You know, the frying pan has a little bing, 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 to it. You know, it's got a little, well, let's move on. But seriously, you yourself, I guarantee you today, had to th cast down, a, you had thoughts in your mind that if you allow it, it'll take root and get in your heart, and then your mouth will speak out of the abundance of your heart and it all come from the enemy into your thoughts into your heart and then out of your mouth why did i say anybody ever ever say why did i say that how, how many's ever said that how many's ever said why did i open that keg of worms <laughs> miss james you, you you're familiar with that okay but see we all struggle with that area but god has given us the overflowing grace of righteousness and grace to reign and rule in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And each day in our life, we walk that out. Now, I want to help you a little bit here tonight. I want you to uh, turn to uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians Six. Let's see. I know that's in the Bible somewhere. There we go. We're getting to it. Second. That's a biggie. Uh, let's look at the uh, on that the last verse. That's I can hardly see that now. All right, that's 517 there. Uh, we want 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting with 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting with verse 14. All right, here we go. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mismated alliances. In other words, if you're a Christian, don't marry an unbeliever. I love him, Daddy. Yeah, I know you do, babe. 
And he's fixing to open a keg of worms. All right, now, if you've done that, thank God you're saved. With them or come under a different yoke with them. Inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership have right living and right standing with God with iniquity and lawlessness? Or how can light have fellowship with darkness? It won't work. Now, you go out on the job, you got to work with people out there, they're unbelievers. And here's what I want to show you something that will help you out. There is a spirit, people put off certain attitudes. Have you ever been around somebody that's moody? Yeah. Got a bad attitude? It'll get on you. It'll get on you. It's a spirit. And you feel terminated. Man, I've gone home a many times and had to pray the thing off. And that's what you got to do. That's terminating your spirit. It's a termination that if you're around that type of person long enough, you will develop a negative spirit yourself. And everything is negative. The world's going to the dogs. No, it's going to the devil. Well, this is happening. That's everything is bad. Or they talk. They always talk on this side of the cross when you were lost, but they never talk on the resurrected side. All right, look what it says. For what? All right, I said that. Let's go to the next verse now, because I'm, I'm I'm heading you somewhere now. What harmony can there be between Christ and and Bala, the devil? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Now, here's what you have today. You have Christ who lives in us, and then you have the Antichrist who lives in other people that are not saved yet. Hello, that might be new terminology to some of you, but uh, let's finish that and I'll turn the scripture and show it to you. Next verse. What agreement can there be between a, the, a temple of God, which we are, and idols, for we are the temple of the living God. These bodies are. Even as God said, I will dwell in and with and among them, and will walk in and with and among them, that's us, or the believer, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. This is why our battle is between the world, the flesh, and the devil. If you're not careful, you can get hooked up with the world, and begin to practice what, if you're around the worldly people, you'll start practicing these worldly things that they're doing. Hello, anybody out there? When I worked at the air base, which I worked out there 32 years, they would have these parties at Christmas time. And then the women started coming into the Air Force, and, and the party really got started real good. <laughs> now, I know that's bringing back memories to some of you, but just hold your whole study. I'm just telling it like it is. And so they had this big hallway, and they set up all these chairs in the, in the beer keg, and everybody's drinking, and and the, and the women, the uh, airmen are coming in there, and next thing you know, we've got a big party going. And they always say, well, where's Tilton? Oh, he's back there in the back having a prayer meeting. I wouldn't go to those parties. I loved every one of those boys. I shared Christ with every one of them. I was the best friend they had, but I would anticipate in their party. Oh, my flesh at time. Yeah, my flesh at time, but I tell you what, I put it under fast. I'm dead indeed under partying, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus, my Lord. So I'm the only one in the shop, and they're all down there partying. Now I'm not condemning them. They're already condemned if they're not in Christ. Did you know that? The whole world's under condemnation. That's why Christ came, <laughs> to set this planet free. 
to set all them people free. But uh, many of them came to Christ. But I stood my ground. And next morning to come to work, oh. I said, what's wrong, Jimmy? <laughs> Too bad. I want you to clean out this thing over here, would you? Come on. I was a foreman, say, I didn't have no pity on him. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> How many's been there? I used to, I was there. I was a I was a party man at one time. Life of the party. That was Bob. <laughs> Get up on the table, then da 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 da. Come on, baby, let the good time. Huh? Wait a minute, I'm in church. Okay. I'm just telling it like it is. This one guy, let me tell you about this one guy. He was a backslidden preacher's boy. And uh, he'd go out with the boys and get drunk. And he, he, in, in, in the, uh, 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 what do you call those places they drink now? Honky well, honky-tonky or whatever. <laughs> and he'd get a few beers under his belt. He'd jump off of the table. You know what he'd do? Everybody in here, go, he was, a, he was a, a pastor's son. Now, he was the son of a pastor. And the Word of God was in him so much when he got drunk, he jumped up on the table. Every one of you are going to hell. I'm telling you right now, if you keep this stuff up, that. <laughs> now, that's what he would do. He would get so free, you know. But see, we've learned, we've learned to walk in the Spirit, and we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And remember this, God has given us the free gift of righteousness and the free gift of grace to reign in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So all we do is thank you for it. Amen. Now, we finished that. All right, that's uh, all the way down to... Uh, now I want you to look at... Uh, what verse is that? 17? All right, look at uh, 18 now. Are we there? 18. And look what it says. 518. 618, you're right. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And I think that's the only place in the Bible that you'll see daughters. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I think that is. So, <clears throat> God is saying, now you're my children. If you get over there, but what fellowship do you have? You're light. What fellowship do you have with darkness? Their tamination is going to get on you. And next thing you know, you'll be talking like them. You'll be thinking like them. You'll be drinking like them. You'll be acting like them. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, it happens. Happens all the time. Look at the people in this fellowship that are backslidden. I could name them to you like that. And you know, what? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's right. I followed their, their course all the way through, prayed, fasted, did everything I do to, to try to stop them from, from backsliding, and they still backslidden. Now, they're, they're in God's hands. That's all I could say. Mar and their marriages is busted up. It's sad. Now, let's look at verse 7. And are everybody there? Chapter 7, I'm sorry. Verse 1. Now, look at this. Now, remember, there were some promises in there in what we've just read that, that, he, that he would be a father to us. Now, look at that. Therefore, since these great promises are ours. Now, what great promises is he talking about? Over there in the next, last chapter we just read. See, you go back, you go back here, and you see some of the promises in there. Come out from among them, separate yourself from them. Says the Lord, and touch not any unclean things. Then I will receive you kindly and treat you with favor, and I'll be a father. All that is a promise, a promise, a promise. All right. Now, therefore, since these great promises are ours, beloved. That's us. Notice this. Let us cleanse. Let us cleanse. That's what it says. How many in here uh, cleanse their hands before they eat? Let's see. Yeah. Or stand in and say, Lord, clean my hands. 
Huh? There are certain things that he wants us to do. Those who said, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates. Now notice this. And defiles body and spirit. So when we cleanse ourselves from everything that defiles body and spirit, we bring our consecration to completeness in the reverential fear of God. Okay? Susan goes around and she cleans our counter in, in, in the kitchen. We have these counters. And she goes, <laughs> what is she doing? Cleaning the counter from all contamination. Have you ever seen this light? There's a light that they can put on and, and, it, and it just magnifies the germs. And you clean your counter and they put that on your counter and it's like you haven't even cleaned it. Okay. See, there are spiritual things in the world like demonic powers, evil spirits, germs. I had an uncle that, that lived back in the swamp years ago that my dad and me went back there to visit him. He had a house back there, no windows, no, no screens. His name was Warren, Uncle Warren. He was a World War I veteran. And we're there, we're talking to him. And he's opening up a can of beans. And he starts eating the beans. And his hands were real dirty. And Dad said, well, Warren, aren't you going to clean your hands? And he says, for what? And Dad said, well, aren't you scared of germs? And he says, what's that? <laughs> Have you ever met anybody like that, quite like that? <laughs> One person. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't know that there's things that contaminate our spirit, contaminate your body. You take the radiation. They drop a bum uh, 300 miles from here. I'd rather be there than here if the wind's blowing this way. Because that radiation is coming down the coast and it's going to fall on us. And look, it ain't hurt us at all. Look, seven days later, you begin to break out in these blisters. See those blisters of mine? <laughs> I told that guy to sit down. He thought I said stand. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> it'll start eating away at your flesh, it contaminates your spirit. And you'll breathe it in. I'm so glad. I just had a, a physical. Yesterday I went down, had a physical, and they checked. I had 95% of uh, uh, air, what do you call it, in your blood, oxygen in my blood, yeah, which was supposed to be real good. That's why I can sing so good. <laughs> But there's things that, you know, we, we try to tell them. I'm so glad that God convicted me of smoking. Now, if you smoke, I'm not on your case. I love everybody. I just speak the truth. Take it up with Jesus. I just speak the truth. <laughs> but how many of you are glad that you quit smoking? Huh? One, two, three. The rest of you ain't even going to say a word. You're making me think I've never smoked, Pastor Bob. I was a goody. But I smoked cigars. <laughs> I dipped snuff. <laughs> so what is in your life right now that's contaminating you? Now think about it. This is not to put you down. This is to get us to think. Hmm. What could be contaminating God's people today? Can I share one thing? Your thinking. Your thinking. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. Your thoughts will contaminate you. Listen to this. 
you got 99 good things happening to you. But there's one thing that went wrong, and you concentrate on that one thing, and it just seems like, oh, the end of the world is here. And your mind locks in on it like a missile. Lock it in on the target. And 24-7, you think about that one thing. I went to church the other day, and it was the shield of faith, and Pastor Bob hugged everybody but me. And you think about it, you go home. See, the devil comes in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He preaches, you know, like he loves everybody. But I noticed he didn't, he, 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 no, he didn't hug your neck. How many of you ever had that? <laughs> you know I'm telling truth. But, it, you know, it's like the woman that went to the football game. And she's coming in trying to find her friends. She looked out there, and they, and they were all in a huddle out on the football field there. They were in a huddle. And she come up to her friends. She saw them out there in a huddle. And she looked at her. Look, they're talking about me. They didn't know that woman even existed. I liked a Mex Mexican guy. You know, he, he cut from Mexico, and he went to the United States, went to a football game and everything. And so anyway, he goes back home, and they ask him, well, how did you like America? How did you like the football game? How did the people treat you? Oh, they treated me with such respect. You know, they couldn't, find, they couldn't find a seat out there where a lot of the up people sit. But they put me up on this high uh, flagpole, I think it was. And, and I sat uh, up there, and I watched the game from there. And before the game started, they all put their hand on their heart and they said, Oh, say, can you see? A little light, you know, I'm putting a little light stuff in there for you. But there's things that terminate, and then when you, when you pray, you need to pray against those things that terminate, spirits that terminate your mind, your spirit, or even your body, okay? Now, I'm waking you up on some things, and some people don't know why they got a uh, bad attitude. I would monitor my children. When they came in from school, I watch their attitude. Watch the attitude and you will see what your kid is hanging around with. And if I saw a bad attitude, I said, come on, girls, let's sit down and talk. Well, my teacher today, I don't like her, Daddy. I don't like her. I said, honey, we're going to change that attitude right now. She's there to teach you. You're there to obey. You don't put your hand on the, your head, uh, on, rock on one shoulder, or put your head between your legs. You look straight up there and you pay attention to her and you learn everything you can because this is your window of opportunity of learning in which as the years go by, you're going to need everything that teacher's teaching you. And all God's children say, I love to see people back there laugh. I know, yeah. All right. Can you imagine what it does to me, how it contaminates my spirit? Seriously, let me say something to you. See, we are spirit beings. I'm up here. My spirit is going out. Did you know that? My spirit is going out. And if you're not receiving my spirit, I can tell it. Because my spirit comes back to me wounded. By the, not you guys, all of you are paying attention tonight, but I'm talking about many times. I've, I've preached up there, and it's like a, 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 a beam of light. Whoom! will go to that person, a beam of light, come back to me, and I know something's not right in that person. See, for those that have preached and taught, they understand those things, and you might have three or four bad attitudes in a congregation and you've got to stand up against that and keep preaching and teaching. 
Then sometimes their eyes roll back in their heads. That's when I pull out my uh, frying pan. And I go, boing. <laughs> Hey, that's pretty good. There's two of them sitting there. Boing, bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bong, bing. <laughs> All right. Am I getting too deep for some of you? Yeah. All right. All right. Now, cleanse ourselves. We have to do it. Now, here's the way you do it. Turn to 1 John. First John, and, and, and I know that my brother knows where that is. Verse 9. But I'm going to start. I tell you what, let's start with, um, let's start with verse 6 first. Okay, back up to 6. Here we go. First John 1, 6. So we say we are partakers together. Now we're talking about the church. We're talking about believers and enjoy fellowship with him when we live and move and are walking about in darkness we are both speaking falsely and do not live and practice the truth which the gospel presents now let's go over and make sure we understand that so if we say we are partakers together and enjoy fellowship with one another but we are actually walking in darkness we're really lying we're not having no fellowship with one another And one of the, the marks of a true Christian is that you will love the brethren. And it's very dangerous not to love the brethren. That's in 1 John also. I didn't say you have to love his ways, but you've got to love him. That's one of the marks of a true Christian. I'll say that again. That's one of the marks of a true Christian. Now let's go to the next verse. But if we really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, notice what? We have true unbroken fellowship with one another. Now we're talking about in the body of Christ and also in the family. We do not have fellowship with those in darkness and in, in, uh, in the non-believers. And notice, and notice, notice the, the, the dividends of that. Notice the result of that when we walk in unbroken fellowship with one another. We're loving one another. Look what happens. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. Now, even in the family, between daughters and mothers or, or uh, sons and, and, and husbands or daddies and all, you probably recognize in your own family some folks that ain't having real fellowship with one another and somebody ain't walking in, in, in the light. Quiet in here. <laughs> Because if you're walking in darkness, you're going to get contaminated with that darkness. Your body, it's going to affect your body. Yeah, it'll affect your body. Anxiety attacks. All kind of things happen to us. Imaginations. I made it in my mind years ago, and I know Mike has too. I'm going to love you regardless of what you do. You can throw rocks at me. You do whatever you want to do. And when the, you cut the lights out at your house and if the house blows up, it wasn't me. <laughs> See, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I say, walk in the light, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, you can tell when you're not walking in the light. Because you're watching, oh, I'm going to get real good here directly. 
You're watching mo the movies that you shouldn't watch. How many ever done that besides me? Huh? You get interested in that. That's what gets me. You know, it starts out like this is great. This nice scenery out there. The hills and the lakes out there. Oh, you just, oh, this is like what I like, you know. And this is a great adventure, you know. And you're just sitting there, you know. And, and all of a sudden, some man comes on there. And, and uh, this, this face comes on the TV and, and, and yeah, at you, you know. You, and you're trying to click it off, you know. How many's ever done, you know. I tell Susan, I said, honey, I try to look at what, I don't even want, I close it down sometimes. And watch that computer, it'll sneak up on you. Yeah, that computer sneak up on you. Yeah, I'm telling you, I looked the other day, I was looking up these sermons, boy, I was having a big time. Then they had these other pictures over there of some things that, that, that nobody needs to look at. Even the people that made it are not look at it. And I said, what's going on here? You know, and sometimes you've got the thing on, you're looking at it, and this other stuff flashes in front of you. Well, what is it? This advertisement or this, you know, this beautiful girl, you know, comes on there. Yee -hee -hee -hee, you know, and you, and you, 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 you all know I'm telling the truth. And we have to clean ourselves from all of that stuff and get, don't be, you just got to get rough with yourself. I'm just like anybody else. I'm a preacher, but I'm a man too. You girls know how men are. You can, you can, tr you can trust them as about as far as you can throw them, right? See, I'm just being honest. That's real life. We live in a real world, and this is the things that we fight every day, and that's why you got to walk in the light and walk with Jesus and say, God, unless you help me today, I, I sing this song a lot. I can't even walk. Without him holding my hand. I can't even talk without him directing me each day. See, so you'll get to that point that you'll get closer and closer to the Lord. And, of course, when you do, the enemy's going to try to come after you, try to drag you down. Then you can't pray, you can't preach, you can't teach, you can't sing, you can't worship. You can't look at body square, anybody in the face, squarely in the face anymore. You feel ashamed of yourself. Come on, I'm preaching now. You feel, con you feel condemned. And you end up, I'll say on this side, on the, on the back side of the church. And when you get back there, the next place is out the door. How many of you have ever seen that? Yeah. They start up here and they work on back. So I'm glad y'all are holding out pretty good there. <laughs> All right. Now, where are we at? <laughs> that is the verse, 1 John 1, 8. Okay, next, good. Now, remember, if you walk in the light as he is in the light... You have fellowship with one another. But if you step out of that light, and we all have at times, that's when the man sleeps on the couch and the woman's in the bed. You don't have a couch, you sleep on the floor. <laughs> if we say we have no sin, he's talking to Christians here now. He's not talking to the, the, the lost folk. Refusing to admit that we are sinners, talking about or have sin as a saint, we delude and lead ourselves astray, and the truth which the gospel presents is not in us, does not dwell in our hearts. Now you know that the, one of the biggest things is to admit that you, that you were wrong. I've experienced that in my own marriage. I've been married 61 years, and I remember one time I experienced that. Or was it two? <laughs> what goes on inside of you at that moment you know you need to apologize to your wife or your husband but the struggle is there there's the struggle might be the daughter to the mother or the mother to the daughter I'm not going to admit I'm wrong I walk in the light. We, 
and God knows it. Everything is exposed to him. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Everything. He sees everything. Now, I have, I have wrestled, like, for example, Susan would say something like, did, did, well, did you do that, that or something? And I and I and I go around the mountain and uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> give me time to think. Uh, oh, 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 I don't think so. What do you mean you don't think so? You know so. I don't know so. Do you know so? <laughs> do you know so? You don't know so. But the struggle is there. How many can identify with it? But the pro, you know, it just, but I tell you what, you can pray to doomsday. God don't hear it because you're blocking it with that resentment that you have towards that person. And you've got to get right. That's why the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Because if you do, during the middle of the night, the devil's going to show up at your bedside. And things are going to happen that you won't understand. You're, in other words, you've opened the door to the devil and he can get a, take advantage of you. So you've got to keep it clean all the time. All that tamination out. Come to the throne. All right. Now, let's go to the next verse and we'll close. We've got two, three more minutes and we're going to close. Are you there? Now, right, here's this verse here. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he's talking to Christians, he, God, is faithful and just true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all sin. Unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will and purpose, thought, and action. Now here's what you've got to do. Number one, confess it. And number two, receive the cleansing. Hello? Receive the cleansing. Because if you don't, and here's what the devil will do. He'll accuse you. You didn't really mean that when you confessed that. He'll try to deceive you. And you've got to stand and say, remember this. We overcome Satan how? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we love not our life unto death. And what is our testimony? I've confessed that sin, and God is faithful, and he has forgiven me, and I'm cleansed from all unrighteousness. And then you get back in the light, and you just keep on walking in the light. And then if something happens, you trip up again, you come back to 1 John 1, 9. That's what you got to do. Listen, there's no other way. There's no other way you can get yourself clean. You can take 100 baths in one day. Won't do it. It's the blood and your faith in the blood that the blood has and will cleanse you. And God is what? Faithful and what? Just to do the job for us as we present that to him. And anything that's causing uh, tamination or anything that's polluting us or defiling us, we find out what it is. Always deal with the cause Get rid of the cause, and the effects will disappear. Amen? So remember that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word that cleansed us tonight. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Father, that we learn these principles and we walk them out in our everyday life. And we thank you, Father, for your love, your grace, and the abundance of grace the gift of grace, the gift of righteousness that enables us to rule and reign in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. In his holy name we pray, amen.